Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about some reproductive technologies. First thing we're going to work out what it is I'm talking about when I say reproductive technologies. Then look at a few different examples including selective breeding, artificial insemination, artificial pollination, cloning and the dreaded human cloning. So firstly, reproductive technologies. Now, I say technologies, but this is something that has been happening for thousands of years in human history. Ever since we stopped being hunter-gatherers and started cultivating crops of barley to make beer, we've been trying to make that barley bigger uh, with more seeds so that we can make more beer. And this has been done to a whole heap of different organisms to alter the genetic composition of the population. And some of the reasons we do this is to produce organisms that are bigger, faster growing, disease resistant, tasty, and better looking. The simplest form of reproductive technology and the one that we've been doing for hundreds of years is selective breeding. And basically you get two organisms that have uh, desirable characteristics and you mate them together and produce an offspring which hopefully has those desirable characteristics. The downside to this selective breeding is that it takes a long time for the population to be changed uh, and for these genes to spread across the population because you have to wait for the generation to generation, uh, which in different plants and animals could be a long time. Something that we have basically purely due to selective breeding is dogs and different breeds of dogs. So dogs all had a common ancestor and through uh, selective breeding of different dogs that have desirable characteristics uh, such as fluffy tails or big long noses or I don't know, good at killing rats. Uh, we have all these different breeds of dogs now. A more efficient way of doing this is through artificial insemination and this involves getting the sperm or semen from a male that's got desirable characteristics and then putting that semen into a female that has desirable characteristics. Now the good thing about this is that you don't have to have the two organisms together. So if you've got a, for example, bull that has lots of desirable characteristics, you can milk that bull for semen and send it all around the country to cows that also have those desirable characteristics so that their offspring have those desirable characteristics. In the old days, what you had to do was actually get that bull and put it in the paddock with a cow and wait until they had sexy times and then take that bull and put it into another paddock with another cow. So artificial insemination is a huge leap forward uh, in this reproductive technologies. A similar uh, reproductive technology that we have for plants is artificial pollination. And this involves getting the stigmas uh, from plants and dusting those with the pollen uh, from other plants that all have desirable characteristics. So a great example of this is Mendel's peas, uh, so that he didn't have any of this cross-pollination, all his peas were artificially pollinated. And he actually went as far as cutting off the uh, stigmas and the anthers of the uh, peas, the mother and father peas, that he wanted to use so that they didn't pollinate themselves cloning and this is a word that has certain connotations to it but all cloning means is that it produces genetically identical organisms so any organism that reproduces through asexual reproduction produces clones and for many many years we've been using cloning uh, to cultivate plants so we might do cutting or grafting where you get a cutting from one plant and you plant it and then it grows into another genetically identical plant. And this is how we have the Cavendish bananas all over the world. Uh, the problem with this is that, that because of all these organisms are identical, there isn't a lot of genetic diversity within the population. Cloning in animals, however, is much more complicated and it's something that we've only been able to perfect in recent years. And when I say perfect, I actually mean actually get to work. We haven't perfected it yet. Uh, so in 1997, we cloned the first sheep, Dolly, uh, using nuclear transfer technology. Uh, however, 
it's not something that's done on a huge scale. And there's a, new, there's a number of reasons for this, uh, including how expensive it is to create a clone. It's generally, even if you've got an organism that's got pretty desirable characteristics, uh, it's generally not worth the money to get another organism like that when you could just use something like artificial insemination, where you'd get an organism that has you know, similarly desirable characteristics. But there's also problems with uh, burst defects as well as lack of diversity within the population, like I said before, and the general negative public sentiment that goes with the word cloning. Human cloning, on the other hand, is a huge social and ethical issue and pretty much totally banned in most countries. Uh, this is something that is absolutely terrible uh, for the reasons that I just said uh, about why we haven't taken up animal cloning, uh, once we put that into a human scale and looking at human lives, uh, it's just not worth it. Okay, in this video we've looked at reproductive technologies being any way that humans interfere to control the spread of genes within a population. We've looked at the first type, selective breeding, where you get two organisms with desirable characteristics and you breed them together. Artificial insemination being a step up from this, where you don't have to get the whole organisms, all you have to do is get the sperm from the male and put it inside the female. Artificial pollination, where you get the pollen from the male and put it on the stigma of the female plant. And cloning of both plants, pretty easy. Uh, animals, a little bit harder. And humans, let's not go there. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.